Hey everybody, welcome to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, and this is the sixth episode in my fourth Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy series. Let's go straight to the comments this week. Uh, the first one I want to go over from both Ken Kenneth Larson and Arch Redbeard mentioned that I should avoid researching Embrace Darkness until I'm actually evil, have an evil alignment. Um, they are right. I probably won't research that anyway until I'm getting ready to start producing units, but yes, you don't want to research that uh, because it makes your leader and all your heroes dedicated to evil instantly. So if you're not evil, you're going to have a morale penalty for your leaders and heroes. Um, plus, any units produced in the city that it's cast on obviously will be dedicated to evil as well, but it'll instantly hurt your heroes if you're not already evil. So I need to wait on that until I'm ready for it. Um, Kenneth Larson also mentioned, I think, a great idea getting Seed of, De Seed of Distrust could be useful, especially above ground. If I'm going to be declaring war on a lot of other cities, I may as well prevent the enemies from befriending them. So if I cast Seed of Distrust a lot above ground, I might be able to slow down my en the growth of my enemies' economies. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as soon as I can. Um, it'll be three turns before that's researched, so hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, if I can clear that structure, it'll happen a little faster, but we'll see what's actually in there. Uh, let's see, Tarsak mentioned that hostile quest mobs stay in the border of the city they're threatening, so for instance, I kept my druid way back here just in case, or not my druid, my theocrat way back here just in case the dragons that were in this city would rush out and attack him, but it turns out I could have actually left him, like, right here, and he would have been fine. So, um, that's what Tarsak's telling me anyway. I think he is probably right about that, because it doesn't really make sense that they'd venture outside the borders of the city if they're threatening specifically that city. I do know that once you enter the borders, it's fair game, and they can come after you. Um, he also mentioned that I should save Theocrat points uh, in terms of just being prepared for when they become level 7 and both healing and convert become available. I do frequently forget to do that, but yes, when you hit level 5, save those points so that... Actually, no, it'd be when you hit level 6. Don't buy anything on level 6. Save those 5 points, add them to level 7 to get both healing and convert on the same level. Two of the Theocrats' most useful abilities. And then finally, Mr. Sariabot uh, mentioned that I should consider getting Inflict Immolation on my king. I do have upgrade points to spend. Uh, he said that if I am turning him into a warrior, that might be a good idea. I think he's probably right. I do want to check uh, one thing here that's primarily poison units. I don't know what's in there. I was thinking of like getting an elemental resistance for my army, but I don't see any reason to in this case because I'm not really going up against anything that is lightning or fire, at least not yet. Eventually I will probably want these, but for the moment I think I want to just get Inflict Immolation. I think it's kind of a useful thing to have if I'm going to be doing a lot of fighting with my king. And I'll save that last point uh, for something else later in case I need it. And that's all the comments for this week, so I'm just going to get moving with this one as quickly as I can. Um, I did want to mention one other thing. Arch Redbeard has been talking about my need to build more cities. Um, he's not wrong. I could use cities uh, out and about throughout the map. map. I found some decent enough spots now. Um, he had thought about maybe putting one over here just for gold income and something to produce other settlers with, but I think I do want to spread out a little more first. Now that I have enough armies that I can actually maybe do that. Um, I think the next city is probably going to either go down here near this stuff or possibly up in this, probably this area. Uh, the thing is I need to get out there and clear that haunted boneyard first. There's also the possibility of getting a decent city around where these units are. Um, maybe not. There's actually not as much out. I, I seem to remember there being more out here than this. Maybe there's some stuff up near that haunted boneyard. I'll find out soon enough. In either case, I probably should start building another settler pretty soon here. Um, maybe maybe now, actually. Let me take a quick look here and see how much that's going to cost me. Three turns, 275 gold. Uh, the settler is 275 production. Um... I'm wondering if I could get it a little faster with a Master's Guild. That's an extra 15. That'd be like 130-something production. It would still take... Wait, the, no, that'd be 132 times 2 is 264. Still would be 3 turns, so I'm going to go ahead and 
just build the settler now. Get another one out as soon as I can. I kind of want this city to grow too, so that... Oh, wait, that's unexplored anyway, so it doesn't matter. Alright, i got a builder's hall over here so I can start beefing up this city more. I can build a storehouse in one turn, so I may as well do that. Get some growth going over here. And then down here, this city is going to... I want to start gearing it to build machines right away. So I want a siege workshop or a builder's hall. First things first, I want to boost up production. Um, and I also want to clear that structure as soon as I can, which I think I can do on this turn, probably. No, not quite. It's going to be next turn, but I will get there. All right, let's have my king join up with some of these other units. My Theocrat is going to head down here to help fight in the next battle. And I'll give him some melee troops to take advantage of Sacred Arms. Uh, these guys, you know, I'll just bring them down and send some of them to join the king. Kind of need, uh, you know, those wisps are gonna wisps are going to kill this guy if I'm not careful with him. I think he's gonna sit this battle out just to be on the safe side. They'll have it. I'm sure they'd teleport straight to him. He's only got like one health. All right, might be able to take a couple of these things out before uh, before the rest of them get here. Let's see, I would really like to make sure that he doesn't get flanked three times. Alright, this the Dwarf Forge Priest is going to nuke one of them, shouldn't be a problem. Not quite enough damage to kill it, actually. Alright, the Blunderbuss will finish it off. Which means that these guys can shoot that one and then my king can finish it off oh wait he's got black bolts i probably should have opened up with him anyway all right that's fine I'll leave them there so they can turn the unit around that inevitably phases right behind that guy and get somebody in a similar position for that forge priest over here Like that'll work fine. Okay, they're all going after those guys. Well, fortunately, I can get them out of there. Yeah, back off. They can't rapid reload themselves. I suppose that would be kind of pointless. Let's get all the uh, weak soft units out of the way. They'll probably go after my king or that other forge priest. That is fine. They're not going to do much of anything. Alright, need my king to heal somebody. Need the forge priest to heal somebody if possible. Uh, let's see. These guys have blunderbuss back. Some form of shot there. I think I can... No, I'm going to hit the forge priest too. Might be worth it. All right, he can hit the Forge Priest, no problem. Or not the Forge Priest, the Phantasm Warrior. So, that. That doesn't quite turn them around, but this will.
Oh yeah, I should be able to kill them without too much trouble. Okay, now I can back this guy off, give somebody some healing. Probably be this guy. Have my king heal this guy. And now he can safely blunderbust the thing to death. Alright, cool. That's a level for the engineer too, I need that. Okay, 50, 50 casting points. That's quite a nice amount. I don't know if I want to spend them all now or wait. Hang on to them for something else. I am going to need to convert that mana node once this city's borders expand. Actually, oh, I'll be able to buy that city on the next turn. If I have enough money for it, anyway. Alright, my druid's army here... I wonder what's in that structure. I don't remember if I checked that in the last episode or not. I need them to go over here and clear these things. I guess they'll be coming right back, so I don't want to waste the turn moving backwards. All right, let's see what they're up against. Bunch of Deathbringers. You know, I'm just going to bring up everybody. This might have not been the best way to move the units, but it'll work. Alright. Let's go kill these dwarves, which oddly enough will make the dwarves happier with me. He's pretty range heavy, my army, anyway. Let's see, I want to get somebody in the way of that. Well, actually, this will be fine. Because they can only hit there. Put those guys up front. And I need to remember to be getting XP for the spiders and the snakes. Actually, I need to remember to cast Savage Rage or uh, Awakened Spirit on these guys. I think it was Savage Rage, it was the one I picked up. Bad for that guy. Alright, I really want to run up and kill that guy, but I'm going to bring him down here. Try to let the animals get him. Okay, I've got... I do not have Savage Rage. but I can cast it. I'm a little concerned about that Forge Priest back there, but maybe I should... Nah, I'll go ahead and do this. That thing is going to do a ton of damage to that guy, but I need to make sure I can handle that Forge Priest back there. Actually, maybe I can web him. Nope. Okay, then I, if that's the case, I need to damage him so he doesn't retaliate against the snake. Which I can do with these guys. They will definitely kill him. I'm going to give them Guardian Flames for extra fire resistance, too. Now they will definitely, definitely kill him. Those guys have an astronomically high attack for a tier 1 unit. <laughs> 14 physical, 2 fire, 3 shock. Wow. 
Alright, uh, we'll leave those guys there to get in the Forge Priest way. I think he's already got a Light of Sight penalty regardless, but just in case. And then put these guys up on defense. We can always heal them with Nourishing Meal on the next combat round. Alright, I want to... I want to actually take a hit from those guys. Cool. The Shock Serpent is getting close. Needs a bit more. I want to make sure one of those two kills him. So I'm going to leave them alone and focus on that other Forge Priest. First off, let's, uh, let's heal this guy up a bit. Head up here, or actually probably just sit behind the spiders to guard their flank. And I think I can start softening up those Forge Priests. Goblins do not handle damage well. Would do me well to remember that. Okay, I don't want him running down and killing the goblins, and I don't have a way to heal them, so I'm probably going to have to finish off this guy with a different unit. Who would like the XP? Oh wait, duh, my leader. We give that to him. Or hero, anyway. Okay, 54 race governance with the dwarves. I'll take it. I wonder where that's at right now. They're very happy currently. Cool. Alright, now next on the list is these jerks in this little camp right here. No more lost souls for you. Um, I don't think anyone can rush out and kill the goblin right away. These battlefields are usually pretty big. And like there, it does put the lost souls up front quite often. But I want to make sure... I want to go ahead and heal these guys anyway as soon as I can. Uh, where's the forge priest? There you are. Guardian Flames needs to go on the spiders because that benefits melee attacks and goblins can have the nourishing meal. And if they're not going to push the attack, I have the luxury of bringing everybody else over and going and buffing my, uh, my units first. I think they'll rush me from there. I'm pretty sure I'm still far enough away. I hope not, because my druid's hanging back at the moment. Ah, nuts. I moved too far up. You need to back the spiders up. They're a little exposed to an awful lot of ranged attack, not to mention the Deathbringer. I'd like to lure those lost souls into attacking the snake. That would be great. And it shouldn't be hard to do. Something like that should work. Alright, want to get three shots off on that thing. And get the spider out of there. That's a little that's a little dicey. I 
think this spot would be okay. I can cast Savage Rage on the spider. Oh, at least he didn't get my flank. Bring it on, Lost Souls. Go after the snake. Nice. Alright. Yeah, because first strike, I get to hit him twice with Savage Rage. Alright, I need to back those dwarves up a bit. They'll take a hit, but it's worth it if I can get several flame shots off on those guys. Plus, get him out of my leader's face. Perfect. They're not quite out of my leader's face yet, but I'm getting there. Might be able to defensive strike them. Actually, could probably just crossbow them. That works. Leaves him open to ruin that reanimator's day. And I could rush out there with the spider and kill it. How many turns until he gets back up to? That one's at one, but if I end the turn on them, I should be fine. Cool. Alright, the snake is currently... 65 XP. I kind of need him to go after that other reanimator. Can anyone else move up there to support that spider? Not quite yet. They can move up to support the snake, though, and I'll take that. I'm going to back them behind. Let them hide out for a turn. Hopefully that other reanimator moves a bit closer. straight after the spiders, which is annoying because I don't know how I'm going to get my snake close enough without risking them killing it. There's always the option to use up their action points in kind of silly ways. I can actually probably trigger them into healing themselves. I bet. Alright, so if I move up here and move away. That uses one action point. Can move up here and defensive strike with these guys. That uses two. They've got one action point left. I'll almost guarantee you they'll heal. They will heal. At this point, I can move the spiders off of that lost soul, but I need to get units on both of the others. Crossbowman probably is a good choice. And I think my hero for now. I think everybody's okay. Alright, go ahead and heal yourself. He didn't want to. He wanted to just go attack the melee unit right in front of him. Well, now I have the option to web him, and then the snake can finish it off. And hopefully get that final level. Does anyone have any abilities they can use? Nourishing meal, did that come back? Not yet. It's only once per battle. Alright, nothing left to do, but Finish him off, and I now have an evolved Shock Serpent, middle evolution, a mature one. Cool, that is going to be very helpful. Thief's Cow, Night Vision, unit gains plus two vision range in the underground. Um, I'll take that. That might be useful. I mean, I am playing underground. That does help this army a little bit. Because I think that Druid has... Does he have extra vision? He does have a vision rate upgrade, range upgrade automatically. So that makes him a much better scout underground. All right, this would also be a halfway decent spot for a city. There's at least a gold mine and some production up here. Not great, but just kind of a throwaway city, I guess. 
I would like to see what's in there if that inn has anything useful. But I don't know. Now I have kind of a decision to make. Do I want to go back right away and deal with that camp? Or do I want to stay up here and clear some of these other structures with this decently powerful army while I've got it? I think right now I want to go deal with the camp. I have these armies moving east and operating mostly down here. I don't want to have to pull them up to deal with it if the Archons send like a Titan or something down this way. I think this army is good enough that they could deal with it now. Although, I did, I do really want to evolve that spider baby. If I could just get that evolved, I think I'd be set. Alright, I'll probably go up and see what's in the inn. I'll clear it, I'll see if there's anything worth buying in there. Um, on that note, I may need to save a little money for the next turn, because I'm also going to be buying a vassal city. So I might need to cancel production of something. Ah, eh, you know what? The vassal city could wait a turn. I'm still getting money from it. Because, I mean, they're my vassal, but the next one would be joining an empire, my empire. I don't really need that yet. I think getting an extra unit from the sin, especially if it's something decent, would be more worthwhile. So I'm going to rejoin him with the other army and head up there. They'll need some time to heal, which is fine. Then the drone can go and probably stay on the lava lake and move up. Hey, there's another city here. Draconians. Well, well. Prepare to be destroyed. Excellent. That's more evil points for me. I'll pick on the Draconians. That's fine. I kind of want to be on the dwarf and goblin good side. As far as everybody else goes, I don't really care that much. I always do like being nice to the elves because I love their archers so much, but it's okay. All right, I want to wake in spirit uh, so I can continue buffing my animals. And then the rest of my points I will probably continue putting towards uh, getting the druid spellcasting upgrades, druidry. Because I want to be ready for that by the time I reach level 11. I really want to be able to get Summon Beast Horde. I might not be able to get it right away, but I'll uh, start working towards that. Also, Race Governance level up. I want the economic one, I think. The, oh man, the plus two melee strength is nice, but in the long run, I think the gold income is going to be better. Um, let's look at what it would benefit me right now. Right now I have one gold mine, and it's plus three. In every gold mine. I have one gold mine here. This is not technically a dwarf city yet, so it wouldn't benefit those those gold mines. Uh, another gold mine there, so that's six gold. There's one there, that's nine. I don't know. I do have a lot of axemen and stuff right now, but again, I'm not really producing more of them. And I'm going to be converting a lot of cities to dwarf cities. I think in the long run, I would rather have the extra gold. So, I'm going to do that. wonder what comes next. Extra production from Pool of the Firstborn. Man, I, I really like almost all of the dwarves' upgrades. Not a huge fan of the Arcane Forge one. I mean, it's nice having items for cheaper, but honestly, you build an item and then you have it forever. I think I might like the improved mountaineering, but once I go above ground anyway. Meteoric armor is outstanding. And so is the dwarf deity economic. All, all the dwarf upgrades are great. I'm going to take that gold mine one. It gives me a small benefit now, but it will become more pronounced as the game goes on. And that does give me a more of an incentive to put a city down here now, because it's just that much extra gold. If I'm not ready to put one out, I might send the settler down there. All right, let's see who's down here. Maybe get another war declared real quick. Halflings! So you can bet we'll be... Oh, they're already at war with me. Means I don't have the opportunity to declare war on them. That's unfortunate. All right. Still have to decide what I'm doing with this guy.
Honestly, I just have no idea. So I don't want to dig too much. Because I might need some of this dirt for happiness. I think I might send him up. Well, you know, I am going to have him start building some roads. For when, when I get advanced logistics, that's going to be nice to have. Oh yeah, that's right, he was injured. Uh, I kind of want him to go with my king's army here because he needs the extra health. Oh wait, he can't make it. Alright, fine. Ah, it'll be fine. Alright, I think everybody there is good. One more space with that spy drone. I don't need to cast any spells right now. I think I'm just going to wait on that. Looks like maybe another... Well, I'm not sure. Maybe those are just random... Yeah, there's random mushrooms on the ground. I was thinking there might be another Fae City up there or something. Um, yeah, I'm going to hang on to my casting points for now. I don't necessarily really need them for anything at the moment. Although, I don't know. I guess having... You know, having man no, I should probably get mana fuel cells here. I still have plenty of casting points, but I have it on that city. And I could summon like two drones on this turn. But I'm at minus five gold or mana right now, so I'll wait and just sort of manage that on a turn by turn basis. I think otherwise I'm good. I will go to the next turn and probably skip over to that. Okay. Nothing attacked me, so that's nice. And I got the notification that dwarves are very happy. I didn't already know that. Let's start building this road here. And I think the first place I want to build it is to connect these two cities. Actually, wait for that. So I want to see, I want to clear this in first and see how much a unit in here is going to cost me. This will also hopefully give my spider a chance to level up. And while my units are up here, I probably should go capture that Draconian city. I know I'm getting kind of distracted here, but uh, there's a lot of stuff up there that I want. Oh man, capture the city or kill the dangerous, deadly necromancer boneyard thing. It could be really bad if it spawns dragons. I really think I need to go back and deal with that. And again, I don't know what's out there either. And that's so close. Maybe I'll scout a little more. Let's see what else is around here. Oh, hey. Money. Can you move three spade? One, two, three. Yep. You can grab the money and then get in the water. Alright, that little bit of extra money might come in real handy here. Let's uh, probably send in the Boar Rider since he's got cave crawling. Should be a fairly easy battle, a lot easier than my last in battle went. Especially now that I got these guys. Awesome. Okay, these guys are straight up rushing me. I am going to back off. The problem is those... Oh, you know what? I can't. If I run, the swarm darters are going to be in a lot of trouble. I'll just have to pull the other units over and let these guys do their thing on defense. Um, let's see. I want to make sure they can hit those... Those guys. No, they'll be fine can get enough units in front of them. I do need that spider to stay alive, so what I'm going to do, put the boar riders here, this guy here, probably the spider here, and then move this guy back and buff the spider. Nourishing meal. Leave the spider on defense. pull them over as quickly as I can. Wanted to Savage Rage that thing, but I don't know if I'll have time. Okay, they went 
after the unit that was not on guard. It's fine. Okay, heroes bleeding and taking kind of a lot of damage. I think we know who's getting Guardian Flames, at the very least. Alright, those Sun Guards have got to go. If I can web them, that would just be fantastic. Not gonna happen. Okay. I want to get that snake up there and actually just put him on defense, although those Tigran Mystics would then pounce. They could be a real threat to me right now, actually. This battle is not going to be as easy as I thought it would be. Right. Focus on getting these guys over with everyone else. It might get attacked, but that's okay. I'll deal with it. I could take out one of the mystics pretty easily. I could also melee these guys with the forge priest, which would actually handle it pretty well. And it would do a lot more damage. Well, at least on the initial hit. I'm not sure about the follow-up hits. How much damage would those guys do? Two, four times three. Snake would probably kill one. But I kind of want to heal that guy too, especially since he's bleeding. I wonder if there's a spell that might... Okay, I've got stone skin. That's an option. but it doesn't really help against those mystics, except for pounds. It would help protect against pounds. Okay, what I'm gonna do is try to get this guy, I'm, I'm gonna take the more uh, offensive defensive approach. Right, I can get him, if I can get him off of me, I could use the druid to arrow some to shoot an arrow at somebody. Dwarf would do 15. Okay, the dwarf can actually flank. So I think I'll, I'll let the swarm darters do this. King could maybe finish her off. Actually, definitely could finish her off. Might. Okay, would not finish the other one. Snipe her. Tend the snake out here. And hopefully stun the mystic. Okay, cool. And then just to be on the safe side, I'm stone skinning my hero. The spider can get an easy kill on the shredder. And I need to help deal with those other guys down there. Um, probably best to use the goblin to kill one of those units, actually. Since he's a little further away from the chariots. And the snake still got movement left. Definitely want him going after a chariot. I'll have it, yeah, I'll have the spider kill the mystic. Can go like that, flank it, a little XP, getting close, 63. He may have an opportunity here, depending on how this plays out. All 
Alright, the Axeman, this Axeman should be safe to go help out the Crossbowman over here. Let's defensive strike that guy, get him to turn around. Back these guys up just a bit. Nice, strong hit in the back. And then I think the Priest can help finish him off. And then my King, or my Hero, is probably going to move up. And it's just outside of range. I should be able to get two hits in on that guy. Okay, perfect. He's gonna suicide himself on my snake, unfortunately. I don't think there's any way to get a, any more XP from my spider at the moment. Not without having stunned someone, and I was not able to. Um, let's see. That guy is going to die as soon as he moves, so I may as well heal somebody with this Forge Priest. Probably the crossbows. Oh, I, I should have healed my my hero, actually. What I was thinking. Alright. Okay, let's see if I got anybody good. Crossling Royal Guard, High Elf Longbow. Nothing great. Not in here. I mean... The longbows are nice, but I am underground too. I already have a unit with a longbow. Still might be worth it. Let's see, uh... See what quest these guys have. Another end the terror at the mine. For a dwarf crossbow? Hmm. The only reason I would want to do that is to go back and befriend another spider. But it's a little out of my way right now. think about that. For now, let's decide what this army is going to do immediately. I need to decide whether I want to buy a longbow or not. It's kind of tempting, because I mean, longbows are great, and this army could use the extra help. Maybe that Royal Guard would be an interesting choice. I don't think they dislike subterranean. Let me look up something. I don't remember what Frostlings like or dislike. Frostling... I just pick on any any one of them. Uh, they dislike... Okay, they dislike Subterranean, so they're like the Elves. You know, forget the fact that they don't like it being under, underground. An Elf Longbow, I think, would be a good thing to have. I'll go ahead and pick one up. I could actually buy two of them, but that might be overkill at the moment. I do want to hang on to some of my money for other things. Like, for example, building a siege workshop in one turn. How much production does that city have now? 104? That's crazy. And happiness is 489. I could actually kind of close to being able to get that to cheerful, maybe. Let's build a. Well, let's build a siege workshop for now. Actually, public baths is 150. I'm not really that close to that, so we'll go ahead, spend that, and get really close to 500 that way. Let's see who's actually sitting here. Two dread spider babies. Well, I do like dread spiders. I think I'm. Man, there's like three different things that I want this army to go do. Okay, the spider still needs to level up. I have not gotten that level yet. So at the very least, I'm going to need them to do some more fighting. And I think it makes sense because I'm so close. Let's go pick up that extra city up there. And then, uh, but I'm going to need to leave defenders in it too. Because I'm probably getting kind of close to enemy territory. Alright, I'm going to go down here and clear the gold mine. I'll use that to level up the spider, go back, clear the undead, clear this thing, then probably come back up with them, take the city, leave some units in there for defense, and then send the rest of the army off. I think that's more or less what I'm going to have to do. That's a decent army in there too, so let's uh, move everybody out here. 
I'd rather keep the longbows in a group that is relatively happy or can give them happiness. I don't know that they'll... I don't think the druid has any bonuses along those lines. Oh, actually nobody in here does. So they're just going to have to be content for now. Ooh, they're at minus 125. Yeesh. Okay, I'm going to have to try to keep them or make them happy. Let's go ahead and get this battle taken care of. Get that spider evolved. And then go deal with the undead before they become a bigger problem. need to remember to give all those buffs to people too. And my hero needs some major healing. Alright. I want to get the others in position to attack because I obviously don't want the timer to run out. Alright, and then you, I want to befriend the animal, or awaken the animal. Yeah, we'll help the spider out since that's the one that needs XP right now. move the spider up just far enough where it can hang out right here. I'll leave my king here so he can shoot over this if something is threatening the spider and I need to back it off and then I will savage rage the spider. That might be enough to get them to come after me but if not I can move up with the longbows on the next turn. the axeman here. We put those guys there. And some setup like that should work. Alright, here they come. Not going the way I want. Okay, at least they did. I need to see what's threatening my spider. A few things. Those guys are threatening him. Which I could basically solve that problem by attacking him with the Forge Priest. It takes some damage, but they're not going to hurt me. It would neutralize their ability to charge. So I've, I've got enough options here that I can safely try to web this guy. Okay, web failed. Which basically means I need to... Take away some of their movement. Good, they're immolated too. Really want those guys to go away. Alright, I'm gonna move those those guys up into a spot where I can defend them a little easier. Leave the Axeman on defense. That unit has Overwhelm. That's kind of unfortunate. And do some damage to them. You know, I don't know what I'm doing with these guys. They don't have any line of sight penalties. It's being dumb. I'll just kill the Crusher. It solves the overwhelm problem. If that guy comes after them. He's going to do a heck of a lot of damage, but I think I'll be okay. And you need to make sure he can't reach the goblins. 
Okay. Now I already know my king can deal with this. Get that spider out of a jam. And I need to make sure that the spider still gets a little more XP. He's got to be really close. 67. Basically the next thing he hits. I need to make sure he gets something. Uh, the rest of these guys are fine, I guess. Okay, if I can make way for the spiders, I'm pretty sure they could get through and at least hit those guys. I might be able to finish them off. Count them just enough. Alright, perfect. This'll do it. Unit has 21. I don't want to risk killing it. That's again risking killing it. I'd actually really prefer to hit it from the other side with something to turn it around. This should work. Oh yeah, he'll wreck him. He actually probably could have wrecked him beforehand. Okay, that spider just evolved. Now let's think about these other units. get that charger off of them and back up a little bit here. That forge priest can, or forge priest, the elder can walk a little closer and then should have plenty of ways to deal with him. Alright, want to get my king a little more XP if I can, or my hero, I keep saying king. Um, let's see if I can get this snake down. If I can deal with these guys, which I'm pretty sure I can. Oh, nuts. I didn't... I uh, killed him too fast. <laughs> I didn't realize defensive strike would finish him off so easily. Okay, now I've got evolved animals, and I can start heading back to deal with the undead. I'm pretty sure I'm powerful enough now. I, now I can start working towards a King Shock Serpent, which would be just outstanding. Those are, that army needs some healing, too. They're all kind of beat up. Alright, so I'm going to decline this quest. Because I just can't afford the time to go down there. When I think about it, I, I don't know. I think about it again and just think about the potential of having another blight spider. No, it's not worth it. I need I, I need to move fast up here. I need to clear territory and save time. I'm going to decline. The reward isn't great either. If it had a better reward, I might consider it. But just a dwarf crossbow by itself is not enough to convince me. Okay, so good to know this is a dead end. There's like nothing good in here. Oops, I moved my builder too far. Uh, 
uh, did I waste a road there, or was there already a road in those spots? No, I made a weird looking road. Yeah, I must have accidentally clicked him to move. That's fine. Alright, and then I've got this last final structure, or two final structures down here, actually, to deal with. I want to make sure, okay, I want to get units together that make sense for each army. So my king is a little bit more geared towards, I mean, well, my king doesn't really matter, but the Theocrat is de definitely geared towards melee units. So I'm going to pile on, like, these guys with him. And probably at least one boar rider should really be with him. My king could use, well, we'll give him an engineer, because I think... My king's army's already got one. Actually, the king's army would probably be better off with that engineer. I don't know. I'm not going to redo him yet because I don't want to waste movement. And let's see. I'll put the good crossbow with my king. And then the lousy crossbow can just hang out here for the moment. Actually, I guess I could still get him down in the battle. I'm probably going to do that battle on the next turn. Or, I mean, on the next episode. Because I need to start wrapping this one up. Wait, no, I just I just unchecked. I just clicked check on all those units. So it's actually going to skip their turn. Alright. Just so I don't forget or do something dumb. Let's go ahead and get this battle taken care of. Shouldn't take too long. That is three big beetles, though. Dang. Alright, so we're going to have a couple long episodes here, back to back, that's okay. We're making progress. Alright, somebody needs healing. I know for a fact somebody here needs healing. It's these guys. You get Iron Heart. Alright, I'm just going to win this one through the overwhelming number of units, hopefully. This army doesn't have as good of units as my druid army has, but it does have more. And sometimes you just need numbers. Here they come. Oh, those guys are probably dead. Maybe should have left them out of this battle. <laughs> Well, let's start by doing what little I can here. Oh, that's going to be a one. Yeah, ouch. Absolutely one shot. I need to get rid of the swarm darters that are in the back there. Being sneaky behind that rock. Pretty sure. Just fire bolt them a bit. They have very little health. Eh, these guys could take a charge from a goblin big beetle. That did min damage, unfortunately. Alright, I need to get somebody up there to help the king out. Let's do this. Ah, still not quite enough to finish him off. they switch places, it would be. But then that leaves my king vulnerable to a flank attack. Uh, that other big beetle wouldn't be able to reach him, though, so I think this is safe. That will absolutely kill them. Well, as much as I'd love to get them out of that situation alive, I'm not seeing how that can happen. I could cast Slayer's Doubt on them, then maybe turn them around. I 
don't think those guys can actually move without taking a hit from my deep guards. A hit that would be fatal. Yeah, they're fine where they are, actually. I don't need to worry about them. I wonder if stone skin would be enough for... No, there's no way they would still take a hit, a flank hit from a big beetle and walk away from it. Well, if any of you guys noticed a way I could save those these crossbows here, let me know. But I'm not seeing it happening. I think at best I can use this guy to cast Instant Wrath on a... That Instant Wrath slayers doubt on somebody. Hopefully slow down anyone else from getting to me. How about that guy? Yeah. Everyone else is fine. I'll just force him to come to me. Poor, for, poor crossbows. They haven't had a particularly long life expectancy in my army. Oh, that was a nice crit. Let's see, my king can go after those guys and get a bunch of XP for it. He actually won't take too much damage in retaliation either. He's pretty well beefed up. Ouch. Alright, and then that guy is not moving. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. Wondering if my Theocrat could polish him off. Alright, I'm just gonna let the other one come to me. Alright, now we can Guardian Flames all around. Forge Freeze can use it on the king. The king can use it on probably these guys. They're pretty weak. I'm just going to get two hits on them with these guys. Don't want to take too much damage. Getting a lot of crits in that battle. Well, the crossbowman will be remembered in song forever. Hey, there's a bow for my king. It's not as good as the other bow, but it's not as good as a long bow, really, but I'll, I'll take it. Maybe I should consider giving that to the draconian guy to give him some physical damage as an option. Oh, I want my I want my leader to have that. I'm gonna drop those two items on the ground before I forget to do this. So that my Theocrat can pick them up. And then I need to organize these guys into a more powerful fighting force for dealing with that ancient ruins there. So probably bring my best units in for that one. Alright, and then who else? Definitely want the Forge Priest in there. Probably both Boar Riders, I think. Wait, actually, let's see what we're up against. A bunch of Ogres and a couple Boars. Oh, no, oh, oh, not manual combat. Board attack. That would have been bad. Um, that's a gold rank axeman. I kind of want to take them. And the deep guards on defense are always great, too. It's, they're a little beat up, but I think they'll be okay. Then who else? Probably another boar rider. 
I think I'll leave the engineers out of that one. Okay, so on the next turn, I think I'll go ahead and do that battle. I did also get another upgrade, so I'll look at that in the next episode as well. I need to wrap this one up here, so that's what I'm going to do. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in Episode 7.